saw my can canvas notification and probably saw Deb's email the day before that I had some issues with my account that they didn't have access to it for like 30 hours but now it's resolved so if you want to email me feel free to do so the problem is all resolved and that's why yesterday when I, or like the day before yesterday last class I wanted to access to Wi-Fi I couldn't also that was the reason but I had like a spotty you know connection but after a while it totally was gone and I had like really bad connection at home too because we didn't have more them so we're in the process of moving to another place anyway long story short I was using my hotspot in my cell phone I had really difficulty sending the lecture to my iPad what I always do which I'm going to do while I'm talking hopefully without that much of interruption and malfunction I guess okay so I graded your extra credits and your makeup exam and your makeup quiz you can see your grades but just because of the reason that I said I couldn't couldn't upload them on canvas which I'm going to do after the class so if you want to see your grade immediately and I cannot wait till you know weekend or Monday just feel free to come to my office and I can give you your exam and extra credits and everything is here I just brought everything with me so you don't have to worry about that and I ask you or advise you to take a screenshot of your grades so you know what it is because I did that last semester and the students didn't like it because they couldn't see their grade until the last minute right in your grade book on canvas you see everything that has points so if something is extra credit even if I put it like zero it doesn't change your grade does that make sense because it's extra it's not part of your grade because I want you all to see the change in your grade and be encouraged to study uh, I'm not going to add another tab on canvas what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to add the grade in your exam too because I feel like that is the thing that most students need grades on and then if you had a really good score on exam two, I add that to your quiz or like whatever you're lacking. So that's why I asked you to have a screenshot of your grades or know what your grades are. So if you don't see the change, you contact me, okay? I know that this is kind of like difficult to keep track of and it's like more grading for me too and it's kind of like, you should wait to see your grade change. I think that's what, one of the reasons that most faculty don't do that, right? So I kind of need you to check to make sure that everything is fine. Any question about the extra credit assignments or exam, makeup exam, anything? And, uh, if you miss a lecture and you still want to receive the extra credit points, you can just simply, after watching the lecture, reach out to me and I better send you the questions and ask you to respond immediately or give you the questions before the class or like after the class, so we'll work it out. Just reach out to me so I know that you want to receive the extra credits because some of them, like not last session, the other session it was out of 20 points. So some of them have like higher points, so I don't want you to lose the points because you couldn't make it to a class. Any questions? We're good with everything. So I also included the answers to the extra credit questions to make sure all of us are on the same page, but I'm going to pass through them quickly because I have like ethers to talk about in this section in this lecture and I want to progress with that too okay so when we want to write two pentane thiol so what is thiol what does that mean SH. exactly we have sh and I when I graded and this is a good thing about not having multiple choice questions and then having actual questions, but as you see, I should go through each one. It takes much more time, but I can see what are some issues. So few of you still, you know, 
confuse pentane with propane, you know, how many carbons are there? Make sure you know that, okay? When you have pentane, you have five carbon on the main chain, and then these two means that this SH is connected to the carbon number two. And most of you knew that, but some of you still, you know, had difficulty with that. Or you had like OH instead of SH. Or most, um, I guess the most common error was that people connected OH here to the first carbon. So that's not the case. I'm going to eliminate that to prevent confusion. Good? And here, third butyl. Remember that when we say butyl, we have an alkyl, you should eliminate the hydrogen that normally you put here. If you put hydrogen here, that is wrong, okay? What would that be if I put a hydrogen here? What is this structure called? Exactly, isobutane. And then tert butyl and isobutyl are derived from isobutane, right? And I included this, the whole thing, in the previous lecture and all the related sections in your book. So make sure you know that. And, you know, I guess that was the most common error, people having hydrogen here or having like a, you know, something like this. So this is not tert butyl, okay? You should have that from like isobutane. And finally, alkyl oxonium. The most common error was that people thought that alkyl oxonium, oxonium is oxonium. So remember, you have like oxygen, cation, it's a terrible color, o oxygen, cation that is, you know, connected, that has three bonds. That is um, oxonium. But when one of these is alkyl, we call that alkyl oxonium. And I wrote that for all of you that in the presence of a strong acid, alcohol acts as a base and protonates into alkyl oxonium ion. And I'm going to ask you that in the exam. So make sure that you know that. Any question? Good. If no question, let me go to the other picture that I have here. Okay. So, if you want to tell me, so these ones I just passed quickly and explained because as I said, I want to progress with the lecture. We all know hydrochloric acid, HCl is an acid with any definition, okay? So remember, HCl is an acid. So the here, Cl minus would be its conjugate base, okay? So if this is an acid, here water would be a base and that would be its conjugate acid, okay? So you should be able to identify which ones are acids, which ones are bases. Questions? Higher pKa means stronger acid or weaker acid? Weaker, right? Remember, Ka, when it's large, we have, we have a strong acid, but pKa should be low for us to have a strong acid. And then here, what is pKa of 10 to the power of 6? Negative 6, okay. And then substances that can act as either an acid or base are amphoters. They have like amphoteric properties, okay. Which one is a Lewis base? We just talked about that in the previous two, previous two lectures, right? So this one is a base. Why is it a base? Exactly, it has unshared electrons or electrons that are not bonded. Yes, exactly. So that is Lewis space. The others are Lewis acids, okay? And then what is uh, an alkoxide? Conjugate base of an alcohol. Remember, alcohols can be both an acid and a base, right? Then we consider them as an acid, 
and we write the equation, the other side of the equation, we would be having the conjugate base, right? We call that alkoxide. Questions? Okay. So cyclohexanol or phenol, which one is a stronger acid? Phenol, right? So that's why this sentence is false. And then when I give you the values of pKa's, and I say A, B, C, D, which one is a stronger acid? Here, B, right? The lower pKa, you have a stronger acid. And some of you knew that, I assume, but just the order here, pay attention to the order. I just got that from your book, from the table. So you may think that this is the lower number. Just pay attention in the exam, okay? And here, which one is acid, which one is base? NH3, acid or base? It's a base, right? Because it has non-bonding electrons, right? So if this is a base, NH4 plus, is it an acid or base? Acid. And then H2O here would be acid, OH minus or HO minus would be base. Exactly. So bases are like these two. And finally, water can be an acid and a base, right? So it has amphoteric properties. And we said if water is in proximity with acid that is stronger than its cell, it would be a base. And the same thing applies to its acidic properties. Questions? Good? Okay, now hopefully I can go zoom recording. I want to forget that. Okay, go first slide. So now we are on chapter eight and we want to talk about ethers and epoxides. So I included again as something that I was doing recently, I included your textbook so you have all the materials that you need to study. So the good thing about chemistry is that you use these concepts and these materials, these chemicals, these carbon compounds every day in your life. So one category of carbon compounds that we're going to study now in this chapter are ethers. And if you want to start your engine, the engine of your car, you use diethyl ether, okay? And in the next slide, again, as you see, I have like your book. I was just like, wanted to type everything myself, but I thought you have like less slides and it would save me time as well. So I just included your book and I expect you to read this you know, line by line and I'm going to ask you about this, okay? so. Ethers you used in your daily life, as I just mentioned in the previous slide, but maybe you didn't know that what they are, or you know, you didn't know that you had like ether functional group. So one example of ether, as we said, is like, you know, if it's in a fluid that helps you start the car or like starts the car. Okay. And the other one, you know, the most you know, you know, the other example, you know, if you know manensin, which is an antibiotic, it has ether, you know, in it. Or another example, you know, it's like in THC, basically in wheat, marijuana. And I have like this structure and also some um, interesting slides that I got from like a YouTube video in the next slide to kind of attract your attention. And the other one that I'm trying to find here, okay, anesthetics. So anti-pains, right? And it can also be applied to marijuana as well. So all of these compounds or all of these substances, they have ether in them, okay? So that's one of the reasons that we should, you know, study this to know what's going on. And here, your book has like two structures, as I said, monensin and THC, tetrahydrocannabinol. I don't ask you to you know, 
remember the name of this. So the naming of the compounds, I asked you the ones that I that we work in the class, how many carbons we have on main chain and all that, that IUPAC naming, these ones I just included because I thought they are interesting and kind of like interest you in the subject. And as you see, you know, when we have like this, you know, oxygen that is bonded, has two chemical bonds and it's attached to two different groups, we call that an ether group that I'm going to talk about in more detail in this lecture. So this is the thing that I thought is interesting and that's why I included that and I included the link below that. Okay, for some reason in the PDF version it doesn't show that, but I also have the YouTube link in case you're interested to learn more about wheat. So there are like two different, you know, compounds. One of them are like CBDs and then the other THC. So one of them has an alcohol group, the other has ether group, okay? And as I said, I don't ask you these structures or even like these slides, I'm not asking you an exam, but I just want you to know that both, uh, kind of like want to demonstrate the point, both of them have the same structure, but because they have, they don't have different structure, they have the same molecular formula, but because of having different structures and these functional groups, one of them OH, the other O, they act differently when you have them, you know. So where did they? One of them, again, here we emphasize that we have OH, here we have, one of them makes you high, or if you're above 21. So one of them, you know, makes you happy, and the other one doesn't have that effect. So that is because of this oxygen here, okay? Instead of having like an OH here. So now we want to see what is the specific about ether functional group. And yeah, here the link shows, but for some reason in the previous ones, it wasn't showing. So it's like the same video and you're welcome to watch that to learn more about ether. So in general, Ethers are compounds that have two organic groups connected to a single oxygen atom. What it means is that we have oxygen here and then they're chemically bonds to two different groups. And when I was talking about alcohols and comparing them with alkanes, I also had a slide, if you remember, that I had like an OH group and I had like another one that had only oxygen. And I told you this one doesn't have hydrogen bonding, right? And I told you we call them ethers, but I still didn't talk about them. So here's where I'm going to talk more about them. So the things that we learned before also become clearer. Okay. So any question about what ether is? Is it clear? So we have an oxygen is chemically bonded to two different groups. So epoxides are cyclic and three-membered ring ethers that we're going to cover in the next class. So right now, you don't have to worry about them. So if they, we have an ether that is cyclic, we call that epoxide. Questions? Good? OK, so here is another way to show ethers. As I said, we have like oxygen that he has, you know, two bonds, one of them we call, you know, we show that with R, the other, another group. And these two R and R prime, they can be the same, they can be different. That's why we have like the general definition that, you know, two organic groups are connected to a single oxygen atom. So that is the general formula. So if I ask you what is an ether, if you just say that oxygen that is connected to two methyl groups. So that can be an ether, but that's not the general definition. Does that make sense? Okay. And also, you know, this R and R prime, they can be identical or different. They may be alkyl or aryl groups that we talked about in the previous lectures. And as we said in the first slide or second slide, in most, you know, common anesthetic, 
you know, in general, in anesthetics, we have like an ether um, group, and this is kind of like the common structure of an anesthetic that we have like an ethyl here and then ethyl here. Okay, so as long as you know what they are and know how to name them, that's good enough. And you should know that some applications that they have or some compounds or like materials that we use that they have ethers in them. So as long as you read the slides, it, you should be all good. And as I said, we're going to talk about epoxides in the next class. Any questions so far? Good? Okay. Now, as always, when we learn a family or group of materials or carbon compounds, now we want to know how to name them. Okay, so here naming ethers is a little different from other namings that we studied before. So previously when we had like alcohols, right, it was the same, but now we had an OH group, so we would add OL, right? But for ethers, here's how we name them. So we name each alkyl or aryl group in alphabetical order, okay? And we add the word ether, okay? So for instance, here. So the first thing that you should do when you have an ether first, you know, if you have like the expanded or like abbreviated the structure of formula, you should know what, you know, alkyl or aryl groups you have. So in this case, what do I have here? Ethyl, Ethyl right? And remember, you have two carbons that is attached to five hydrogens, so it would be ethyl. What is this one? CH3. Methyl. Methyl. So, and then you have this oxygen that is bonded to two different groups, right? So remember, if you have like this structure, you have an ether, right? So how we do that, first of all, we have like ether at the end. So that is established. Now you have an ethyl and a methyl group. How should I name them? Ethyl methyl or methyl ethyl? Right, we go just alphabetically, so ethyl, methyl, ether. What about here? So what is this one? What is this one? So instead of saying ethyl, ethyl, ether, we just say diethyl, ether. Okay. Bless you. And sometimes we just eliminate the di and write ethyl ether because we know that we should have two groups here, you know, but you're welcome to just write that. But the reason that we can omit it is that we know <coughs> that when we have ether, we have this oxygen that is attached to two different groups. So if we say ethyl, we know, I guess we practice so much that we know we have C2H5 here and C2H5 here. But as I said, you're just more than welcome to write diethyl ether. Questions so far? <laughs> so far so good? So what about this structure here? So if you see oxygen here that is bonded to two different groups, and again here, this R and R prime, it can be anything, right? So it might as well be a benzene ring. So do you remember what did we call this? What's that? Phenyl. phenyl, exactly. So how many phenyl do, or how many phenyls do we have? Two. So we write diphenyl ether. Good? Any questions? Good. So now we're going to add something else in nomenclature. So when we have more complex complex structures for ethers, it may be necessary to name the OR group as an alkoxy group, okay? And 
in the IUPAC system, the smaller alkoxy group is named as a substituent. What that means is that, so here, if you have an oxygen that is bonded to something, and then you have an alkyl here, or like OR, we can denote it, we call that an alkoxy group. Okay, so let me ask you this. If I have, so what is CH3? Methyl, exactly. So now, if I have oxygen that is attached to whatever, so here you see that your oxygen is attached to this carbon over there. But in general, you have like your oxygen, one bond is attached to your rest of molecule, and then here it is attached to methyl. So what would be the name of this? Yeah, so we call that alkoxy. So in this case, it would be methoxy. Okay. It's kind of like alkane, but you say methane, right? Remember, okay, methane right or alkyl methyl so here alkoxy would be methoxy let's talk about the other ones so what would be i guess all of the examples that we have here let's see so let's first talk about this one so first of all how many carbons do you have here on the main chain five right and then if you start counting them somehow that you reach the substituent sooner one two three four five so you have what what do we call this group here methoxy right and then it's attached to the carbon number two so we call that two methoxy and then what is your compound pentane right so Let's talk about this one. Let me just, I guess, demonstrate it here. So here, I guess, let me write this here. What is this? Can anyone tell me what is this? Exactly. This is cyclohexanol. So we have oil because we have OH here, and then we have a ring, so it's like, cyclohexanol and we have six carbons right and here what did we call OCH3 methoxy. methoxy exactly and then the carbon number two is attached to a methoxy so we call that two methoxy cyclohexanol and if you remember way back when we talked about cis and trans isomers in cycloalkanes if we have like this let me just erase what i wrote here if we have like these you know dash wedged kind of uh not arrows what did we call this these types of bond when we have like we fill them out right it means that it goes out of the paper, but the other one means that it's the, you know, one of them comes up, the other goes down. So it's kind of like 3D structure demonstration, okay? So for that matter, that structure is trans. So if both of the bonds, right, were on the same side of the page, we had like cis. If they were on the opposite side, we had you know, trans, right? So when you had like one of them filled, the other one is like dots or dashed, we call that trans. And that is how it um, came from, right? So let me have this one covered. So I asked you to write this one. Can everyone work on this to write the name of this one? Uh, this one? Can you see that? I tried to 
cover the name so it won't be as obvious. Let me have it. So, how did we name benzenes? When we had a benzene ring, how do you name them? Remember? Where should I start naming the carbons? So if you have, let me just kind of like review this here. When you have like a benzene ring, first of all, remember that you should have like these double bonds that they alternate, right? So if you have something like this, that is not a benzene ring, right? Remember. And as you remember, we said we write double bonds, but these bonds are all equivalent and they're not actually double and single. So anyway. But if you have a benzene ring and we had like different substituents like OH, that if it was attached to one of your carbons, we had phenol, right? And then we had like humane, we had aniline, we had like different source that I told you that I'm going to give those in exam. So if you're naming your benzene based on those nomenclature, you start from, so if you want to name this compound phenol, you start naming from that, okay? And then see where, you know, if you have like two substituents, you see where you reach the substituent, you know, sooner. Does that make sense? But if you want to name your compound, you know, benzene, or I guess that could be a good example too. If you want at the end, so you had two ways. One of them was to write this compound as a phenol. The other was to name this compound as a benzene, right? So if you want to name it as, a, as benzene, you start somewhere that you have more branches, right? So you would start from here, for instance. Or like you can start, I guess, let me see, one, two, three, four. So you start from somewhere that you have more branches. Or let me have like here seal. For instance, if you want to name this, you start from here. Let me erase this. And then you are one, two, three, four. You don't start from this chlorine here. Does that make sense? Because we had a rule when we had like the main chain, we want to start somewhere that we, we have more substituents or you, we encounter the third substituent sooner. Anyway, so that was kind of like review of we learned, what we learned before. But in this case, all of them, they are like the same distance. So it doesn't matter where you start. If you start here, it would be one, two, three, four, five. Even if you start here, it would be one, two, three, four, five. So it would be one, three, five. Anyway, is that clear what I just said? Okay. So you have three substituents, one, three, five. And what did we call each of them? Methoxy, right? And how many of them did we have? Three, right? So we write tri and finally we have a benzene. Are we good with these? examples okay so now let's work on this example so how do you write the name of this any ideas so you have ch3 and then you have c here attached to o CH2, CH3, right? And then you have like another, you have one H here, and then you're welcome, you know, to not write, um, not write the expanded structural formula, but you're also welcome to do so. And then here you have CH and then CH3 too. So how should I attach these two CH3s to this carbon? Uh-huh, yes. So you have one H here, and then you have two 
CH3s, right? And always check your answer to make sure you wrote it right. So this is my CH3, right? This is my CH. And then here is my, you know, toxi, right? And then here I have this CH here and then I have two CH3s. So now that I have this structure, what would be the name of this compound, the base name? So why propane? So what is your longest chain? Right? And that is one mistake that I was making long back when I was doing this. It was like similar thing, right? So remember that here, you have like, and you can consider the other one as well, like this one, whichever you prefer gives you the right answer. So the, your base name would be butane, right? And now what do we have? And this is kind of like the same structure that I had before. So one, two, three, four. So why did I name it left to right, not right to left? Wouldn't that also be the second carbon that has attached to methyl? Uh-huh. Yes. Is that clear? So what is the name of this? No, no, this one, CH3. This is methyl. What is this one? Ethoxy, right? So carbon number two is attached to ethoxy, and then number three to methyl butane. Okay, and then you want to write them, you write them alphabetically, always. Questions? Good? Okay. So, I was just like debating, should I do more extra credits or should I just pass through it? How many of you want to have extra credits for today? Okay, so have a piece of paper and hopefully all, all of you have. Is anyone that doesn't have a paper? So try your best to answer the questions. And as you see, when I give you back, after I put the grades on the extra credits, I'm grading them really generously. So as long as you got the idea, I write the correct answer for you to know, but you know, I grade really generously. So do your best. And then for each of them, I give you two points, okay? So it would be out of 12. And you're also welcome to uh, talk with each other and then uh, discuss the problems.
I'm just writing this for your reference. You don't necessarily need to use this, but you may. Thank you. <laughs> so some of them you may have like two ways to name them, like the one that I just wrote here. So any one that you write is correct. So you may look at the first one as like a propane that is attached to something else, right? Because you have like three carbons here, or you may look at it as, you know, isobutyl and, you know, ethyl being attached to it. kind of similar to what we talked about before that here you can consider this to be your base name right and you can write it as a benzene that is something attached to it or you can look at it as propane that has three carbons and something else is attached to it does that make sense we should be able to write both So if you have oxygen that is attached to 
C three H seven. What do you call this? So you had methoxy before, right? What do you call this? Propoxy, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure to write your names. Thank you. So this is also another problem, right? So remember to answer all of them. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. So you have two problems. Each of them has three sections. I saw some of your friends just gave me the answer to the first one. So that's why I say it's out of 12, each of them two points. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Make sure to have your names. <laughs> 